Thank you for purchasing Banks High Flow Boost Tubes for the stock GM 6.6 liter Duramax diesel. These connect the stock turbo with the stock intercooler. We recommend the following tools for this installation. A 3 8 inch drive ratchet, a 20 inch ratchet extension or multiple shorter extensions, inch and metric sockets, Phillips and flat blade screwdrivers. Before we begin, let's take a look at the parts. You have your Banks Boost Tubes, driver side and passenger side a turbo outlet hose, a hump hose, which is three and a half inches to 3.12 inches with a quick disconnect, another hump hose reducer, three and a half inch to three inch, a three and a half inch throttle body inlet hose, one three inch spring loaded T-bolt clamp, two Murray 359 T-bolt clamps, four three and a half inch spring loaded T-bolt clamps, and one Murray 387 T-bolt clamp. The installation begins after you've removed the air cleaner box, the baffle, and fender liners. You'll want to remove the front wheels. This will give you access to the fender liners and better access to the boost tubes. We'll start the installation with the driver's side boost tube. After the stock boost tubes have been removed, it's time to install the Banks boost tubes. Using the three inch to three and a half inch hump hose, grab the two Murray 359 T-bolt clamps and orient them opposite each other facing up. Slide the hose onto the intercooler. Slide the driver side boost tube up through the opening in which the stock boost tube came out. Then insert into the silicone hose. Now it's time to connect the driver side boost tube to the turbo outlet. Find the turbo outlet hose and slide it onto the boost tube. Although there are different ways of doing this, we recommend opening up the two three and a half inch T-bolt clamps and slide them over the hump hose once the tube is inserted. Tighten the clamp down to about five foot pounds, that's 60 inch pounds. Then using your ratchet extensions, let's dive down through the engine bay to tighten up the clamps on the intercooler inlet. Then from inside the wheel well, tighten up the clamp closest to you. Now moving to the passenger side, let's remove the stock boost tube. First step, let's disconnect the ECU harness and set it aside. Then remove the sensor in the boost tube. Now using a flat blade screwdriver, Move the locking ring about a quarter of an inch counterclockwise. This will release the stock boost tube from the throttle body. Now install the silicone hose with the two corresponding T-bolt clamps facing up onto the throttle body. Don't put the boost tube on yet. Now it's time to install the hump hose onto the intercooler outlet. Then with just a little bit of finesse, you'll be able to slide the boost tube into the hose at the throttle body. Don't tighten it down until everything is done. And a reminder, these are massive boost tubes that really increase the flow. That means they're larger and they may take a, just a little bit of finesse to get them exactly into the right position. 
Now jumping down to the bottom of the passenger side boost tube, you might find it a little easier to insert the tube into the hose by using a dull pry tool and working your way around. You may be tempted to use a silicone lubricant. Don't do it. That's the fastest way to get your boost tubes to pop off under high boost. Now it's time to put on the last set of clamps. Now our mechanic is working upside down here through the engine bay and that's to give the camera a better shot. You'll be working through the wheel well which is quite a bit easier. With the bottom section of the passenger boost tube tightened, it's time to go back up to the throttle body and secure those clamps. Now let's reinstall the sensor and don't over tighten it. Reconnect the harness plugs and then zip tie it either to the boost tube or to a nearby hose. Now it's time to reinstall the fender liners, put the wheels back on, drop the truck, and enjoy your new boost tubes. Thanks for watching.